you, you can find a study you said, okay, it's red, and you can find a study you say, okay, it's yellow. And right. what? What I have to do for my patient? And it's really difficult. Uh, I, I believe it's very difficult to know exactly uh, more in occlusion because occlusion, you have one school and they said, okay, we have a good result. And you have another school and they said, okay, we have good results and another one and you have good results. Correct. And so, what? And uh, you try in one way, it's, in, it's good for some patient, but not for all the patients. And so another, and it's the same and the same and the same. This is why it's, I find it very interesting to learn from all the school and to keep and to keep in your mind, okay, this technique should be good for this patient, but this one may be for this patient. Yeah, that's, so yeah, so we collect same information, but we all use it in different directions. Yeah. So for you, it's big part of facial aesthetics. So at, in which time, and it, it, maybe this cross link with some of the questions at the end, but I want to get from you for the audience, the people that doesn't know you, the entire picture. So from which part is you start, um, how do you describe facial aesthetics into this involvement of the process? Is this part of just the aesthetic patients that you have, or eventually you have patients that they go going through you for pain? Um, most of my patients are, I have to say it's 50-50. Um, I, I have to say, I prefer um, to treat patients without symptom. It's easier. It's faster. I think we all do. <laughs> <laughs> faster. But in my practice, 50% is for aesthetic and rehab with no symptom, and 50% is for symptom. And for, for symptom, it's not for aesthetic, it's just for symptom. And so uh, for symptom, it's, I find it's very, very difficult. Too many factors and um, physiologic factors with um, a lot of things like uh, posture and the sleep apnea and um, position of the tongue, uh, a lot of things physical thing, but sometimes I think it's also a psychological thing. Sometimes I find some patients, that, um, I believe that they exist because of the symptom. And sometimes uh, I'm not sure they want to be treated because if you treat them, the symptom disappear and because some of the patients exist with the symptom, they could imagine they don't exist anymore if the symptom disappear. It becomes part of their identity. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think that's a, that's a very deep uh, rabbit hole that uh, we can get into another time. Absolutely true because um, we know that uh, um, long-term pain can definitely have a lot of limbic system uh, connection and uh, once that happens really um, it's, it's very difficult to kind of separate those patients from that and, and, and it will bring to, to, uh, to, uh, to us that there is other whole set of other professionals that need to help us there. Exactly. But uh, let's now, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. So then are you is so technically you're saying you have two kind of patients, 50% cosmetics, 50% pain patient. Is any point of transition of those pain patients to an aesthetic phase? And again, this will interact with another question. Uh, or you doing ortho, or how are you doing that transition part of it? The transition between occlusion. No, between pain and then eventually those spaces come back to be used aesthetics? Um, when, when the patient comes 
for pain, uh, I focus only on pain at the beginning. Just answer the patient, it's pain, focus on pain. Because the mind of the patient is, is absolutely not open for aesthetic. Even if the smile is horrible, it's not a problem for them, it's just pain. So what I do is, okay, they, they come for pain, I have to treat the pain. And so I treat only the function. Um, I try most of the time with a splint. I don't like the splint, but my patient come from very far. So if I place a mock-up and the patient uh, come back uh, home, back home, and uh, you have a problem with the mock-up, it's difficult to remove the mock-up and the patient has to come back to the office and sometimes it's one or two hours um, with plane. Sometimes it's six hours with cars. Wow. So it's very far. So I prefer for this patient to play the splint just in case. Um, so we start with the splint or the mock-up and uh, we adjust. Um, I, I work uh, when the patient has pain, I work with my chiropractor and I send to the chiropractor uh, before I, um, uh, I, I record the new position of the jaw. And after that, uh, I check, of course, the muscles, TMG. I check uh, the place of the tongue. Um, I check uh, the eyes and um, also I can work with a, a podiatrist uh, how the feet touch the floor okay. and, uh, and the last one is also the sleep apnea um, I ask the patient if he has a problem with that or not and to, to have a test if he don't know now, before we get into the questions, I want to get to learn a little bit about what I'm seeing in your last lectures. I'm a big fan of what you do, and I've been watching lectures, and since I've been going to France and trying to kind of learn a little bit of French, so it's just so much, it's difficult. I know the stress that you're right now, because a foreign language is difficult. Look at me, I'm still done speak English, and I've been 20 years in America, right? So imagine uh, to me trying to learn French. Anyways, you saw a, a lecture that you did for an organization in France. I don't remember the name, but really beautiful. And then part of what I'm seeing in common is now you combining some concept of the strategies of Dr. Kois. Uh, we're going to have also do, Dr. Lukas Laxman for uh, Poland, that also is one of the Dr. Koi's advocates. But since we want to try to find what we have in ground in common, I want to find how you find in common in those two process of thinking and explain those a little bit. We honestly really want to know because definitely if it's something that is going to improve maybe the simplify. timing. Simplify. Or simplify. Yes. Correct. That's, so, that's what we're looking for. So, Whatever you want to tell us, how was that, was that thinking process from you to become a neuromuscular and then in some point say, I'm going to get this information for here and I'm going to put it together and boom, this is speeding me this time and I'm cutting these corners here, but I'm getting the same mindset. So tell us about that. Um, so it, it was in, uh, so in two. 2003, uh, I bought my 10 at K7, and I record all my patients like this. And in 2009, I found my training center, GAT Center, and I start to teach how to record the bytes with the 10 and the K7. And I had a problem uh, because um, everybody bought. Um, the tens, but maybe thirty percent bought the K seven because of the price. You know, you know yeah, that. economy, you know, country, right. yes. And um, to record a byte only with the tens is not so easy. And I love the tens, 
it's a, a, an amazing deprogrammer. But after that, to record the bytes, it was difficult. It's easy when you have a K7 because you can see. And um, I met Florin Kofar in 2015. And we worked together and we uh, treat patients together. And I. Uh, I'm sorry, who is that? Can you say the name? Florin Kofar is from Romania, a great high top cosmetic dentist. Okay. Uh, he's an international speaker and he's one of the biggest developers of optimization and uh, uh, um, intelligence, artificial intelligence in planification of cases. So ah, okay. he's a really top uh, leader in, in high end aesthetics and digital. So we, we, we treated patient together. And uh, so he did the aesthetic part with his concept and I treat the function with my 10CK7 and in maybe one year later, he sent me a message. He said, Cyril, look at this. And this was the choice. And you have to try this course with the tense. And this is how I mix the tense and the course. So I use the course uh, just to stabilize my jaw. So I record the, with the tense and with the physiology of the patient. So without touching the patient, just the patients give me the position. I don't push the position. Uh, I don't manipulate the patient and with the choice is now very easy because the patient has just to close gently just touch the choice and it's done and with this system you 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 can adjust with the choice the verticality so just the per verticality it's done with the choice and all the other dimension, sagittally, transversally, and the pitch overall, it's done with the tense. And so this is how I mixed and the tense and the coils. Yeah. And the guy so, is Florin Kofar at the beginning. That's good. So I, will, I have to accept that I do some of those things like that, but it's this it's sensitive in, in my hands. So this is the, the, the situation that I get exposed <laughs> when I try that. Um, one is definitely it's important to keep the patient in a good position because what well, the benefit that we have with the tense is that we have this pulsation, right? But then if you have the patient in the dental chair, that pulse is going to go back. So mm -hmm. to me, it's sensitive to posture. Also to that position of the little ramp that is the device where we're going to stop and I started, part of my foundation, it comes for Pedro Planas, an orthopedic from Spain in the 70s. And he developed something that is called the, the Pistas de Planas, or the landing tracks. And he always was designing everything based in, in uh, camper plane. And he make all the studies in camper plane. And then when I start playing with this device, I will say, the, in the way that another people I'm seeing, they're using it, they try to use like the inclination of the ram to allow the condal to sit back. So they put the thing in the state to have a flat. They will try to make this inclination, like the same when the patient bite down in the Lucia jig, that it will, it will close the joint, the pack that is valid, but also it will influence a distalization of the mandible. So in the first try, because you know that I'm planning a lot of cases through digital dentistry that allow with digital software that allow that you can see the joints and everything together. So my first attempt, I start playing with that inclination, right? And then I say, yeah, if that inclination became too steep, even that the patient is tensing in there, it's still creating a vector of force to distalize the mandible. So that was my impression. Then in my second attempt, I redesigned the, 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 the jig and then I put it more flat. And I say, okay, the idea is this needs to be flat. Now, what I found difficult is that we found a huge population of patients that the garage is smaller than the car. So the maxilla is behind. So part of the complications in neuromuscular dentistry 
I think it's because not many people is controlling the joints and they get too much freedom just by the muscles by itself. And then you get eventually mandibles that they go a little too forward. And then we will have a competence between the upper incisors and the lower incisors. So I find in those cases that was kind of almost impossible to use the jig because if you were trying to preserve a vertical dimension into the aesthetic zone, that mandible, because a deficit of growth or the position was wrong or the crowding or whatever, it will create any disinterference. So I thought, okay, this can be benefit to coach a bite for us, somebody to guide it and say, okay, we have the patient restoring phase one. The patient is out of symptoms, but I need this vertical dimension based in this aesthetic zone and if I already analyze the patient into the spleen, let's say that I know where it's going to be the, the AP of the mandible, I will say, okay, this patient will apply that I can put here and I stop my bite here. But I don't know for you, because this is honestly, now that I've been teaching courses in France as well, the faces are so different. I mean, it's incredible how you find different morphological changes even when we were in, in, in Japan, that they really collapsed. So I found, like here in America, we have a tendency that, yes, we have m maybe bigger discrepancy between the maxilla and the mandible. So how do you do this, or you are still using this idea or this concept, when you have cases that you see that that mandible goes forward more than you were expecting for the aesthetics? Oh. Um, I, I, now I use more ortho than before, for sure. Um, before, uh, maybe, uh, I did uh, one or two or two cases earlier with the ortho and the rest just, um, just with prosthetics. Um, now I love to do ortho. It's ortho just, most of the time it's just to uh, prepare my restorative prosthetics. Yes. And so um, sometimes I realize ortho to place only the upper teeth at the right position. So to, to expand the maxilla. Yes. And after I work out the, the place of the jaw of the mandible. Um, this is one point. The other point is um, I have no patient who want surgery or tonacted surgery. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for maybe if I have a patient with pain, I place a splint, and after this, the pain disappears. Um, maybe the patient at this moment will be okay with the surgery because he knows that the pain uh, has disappeared. Uh, but at the beginning, when you explain, okay, maybe we need surgery to treat your case, most of the time the patient says, no, I, I don't want surgery. Try without surgery. And so I have many cases, um, who are, uh, which are compromised. Just maybe as you, as, as you uh, show, maybe the patient have to be like this for her body, but because we need compromise, I record the patient like this and I try, we try with the patient. And it's correct. If the pain disappeared, we said, okay. We yeah, can... because the, the detorking can be, in many cases, enough. Remember, this is what we were seeing. Look at Dr. Ben, that he was talking, uh, and in his principle, even that he applies neuromuscular dentistry, he started with this technique to remove interferences, and then he removed the pain. So I consider that maybe in this approach, maybe, yes, can be one dimension that can be a little restricted, but I think you have the other dimension to try to catch up 
and also I think can be into that aesthetic zone. Now, let's say about, uh, so you following these cases and you taking data, EMGs, what you observe in these cases that you restore like that, like uh, what you, what you, what you, comp which compromises for the neuromuscular point of view, what the that we manage, you see in those scans when you get these spaces that you work with this combination. Uh, can, can you tell me again? Harry? Yeah. In these cases that you do in, in combination, that eventually you know that the mandible is gonna be here, but you say, okay, it's gonna be a compromise case, I'm gonna do it a little behind. You follow up in those cases and you make eventually uh, more EMGs or eventually your tracking. What do you observe on those cases? Um, mo most of the time, um, uh, if the symptom disappears um, many years after, we can um, some symptoms can appear uh, again, comes back. Um, this is one thing. Another thing is um, the, the occlusion, the position of the teeth are not so stable than if you place the patient exactly on the right position. Um, what, what I can find, in, I, I think I have two or three cases like this. Um, we can, uh, after two or three, maybe five years, we can uh, create some diastema between incisors. Mm. Um, it's like, maybe it's like um, the Maybe the tongue is not at the right place. Yeah. Maybe the mandible is too retrude and, um, and the tongue need more places. And if the tongue need more places, uh, she push uh, the teeth and the teeth move and it's, that's creates some diastema between the teeth. I have some cases like this. And um, other thing is, and sometimes I can, yeah, sometimes I can have some, some clicking. If you have some click at the beginning, sometimes you have click, and when you tend the patient and play the jaw, the click disappear. Okay, perfect. But if you play the jaw a little bit, too much retrude because of compromise. Uh, the click disappeared, but maybe two or three years after the click appeared again. Okay. This is yeah. the kind of thing I, I, I can see. That, that was a great description. Yeah. Yes. Um, we, okay. uh, with 30 minutes. So now we, we can start yeah. with the questions. With the questionnaires, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so Cyril, uh, having explained all these things to us at this point, and you have answered it to a certain degree, but if you can just put that together now, what is occlusion to you today? What is occlusion to you and who were your main influences? Uh, occlusion for me, um, for, first, I, I, I don't really like occlusion because for me at the university, occlusion was only static. For me, occlusion is right. just clack, clack, clack. It's occlusion. Um, I, I like the term of function. Function is something dynamic. And so uh, function, function is two things. The first thing of function is the place of the jaw in the space. Why is the jaw? And when we find the place of the jaw, the second part of function is contact between the teeth. And contact between the teeth is when you bite in static and also mastication. Mastication is, for me today, mastication is the most important. 
Of course, you have Professor Legal yes, here and, to you. And for sure, um, Legal is one of the dentists in function the most important in my yes. life, for sure. I, no, I was postgraduate in occlusion in 2000 and, um, and Marcel Legal uh, wrote his book at this period. And it changed completely the, my, my vision of occlusion. Because it's not, Marcel Legal uh, uh, worked on mastication, but not only on mastication. He uh, worked also in um, how to find position of the jaw. And he worked with a deglutition and uh, a jig and uh, relaxation of the muscles and he work about it also so it's very it's a very important guy for the function beautiful i didn't know that you have influence for him that's awesome we're gonna have actually another doctor from Lebert. from france Milo, emilio leber and he also is gonna he's purely focused in chewing cycles with dr lega yeah. and let me let me say you something because it's it's very it's very funny. Uh, so I was in LVI. It was in <laughs> two thousand five. So I was in LVI, and in LVI you play the tense, you know that, and you record your bite, and you you feel how your bite has to be um, in neuromuscular dentistry. And back to France, it was my level maybe two or three. Back to France. And I um, went to Marcel Legal office. Ah. And I had a course with Marcel Legal to learn about mastication. And so we, I think we were maybe um, five, five dentists in the office of Marcel Legal. And he gave two days courses and we had a lot of end zone and one end zone was okay i'm the patient and marcel legal was a dentist and he created a jig on my teeth uh -huh. and he relaxed me and he plays a cotton roll and after this say, okay place your tongue like this and now swallow and do you feel yes this is the position you know what it was exactly the same position that neuromuscular dentistry I can tell you, I have the same story with Francesca. Yeah. Francesca was taking my course in Dijon and she, I use it as a patient and the same. She take the bites in the way that she take it with the coron rolls walking. We get the two bite registrations and that thing was almost identical. I can tell you, something that can be balanced by occlusion. But this is the beauty of this. Honestly, I think the, the, the intention that we have is as far as you have all the aspects covered, that you can know that occlusion is not just the teeth together, that the neck has a huge influence, that the airway has an influence, that the tongue has an influence, doesn't matter how you do it or you get there. And whatever it works for you or work in your hands, not everything works for everybody's hands. Yes, and not. then, yes, it's, we're all human body. And then if we can get this, I will say, I think the beauty of this is because I know now that this is over, what I need to try to focus to start digging more, you know? This is beauty. This is not an end. There's, there's a whole lot of physiology in all. I mean, this has been the real common thread among everybody that we have talked to so far. And it's funny how everybody thinks they're so different, but they're all talking about the same physiologic factors. They're all talking about function because nothing without movement and function makes any sense. We are not a static uh, uh, entity we're moving we're you know at, at all times there is uh, there is movement um, so let's go to question number two which yeah. is uh, which are the factors that you consider prior to stabilization what are things that you're looking at um, um, the, the comfort of the patient and the symptom of the patient um, It's, it's something really important, uh, how the patient feel, because if I, if I record something 
uh, if I record all my patients, everybody has a problem of occlusion of function. Okay, it's like sure. if you go to the chiropractor or osteopath, you have a problem with your feet, with your leg, with everything. But nature is beautiful and you can live with that and you can live very well with that. So one thing is the comfort of the patient. And um, the other thing is um, if I have to treat the patient, if I have to, to increase vertical dimension to, to change the function, uh, I don't want to manipulate the patient. Uh, I want that the patient gives me the position. So um, I take care of muscles. This is something really important because I think everybody is agree with that. Uh, muscles is a part of the function um, uh, with the, the, the most power. The, the, uh, muscles can destroy everything. Muscles can destroy your mm -hmm. TNG, muscles can destroy your teeth. So take care of the muscles. This is something important. And also take care of TMG because you cannot place um, the joint everywhere. The, the, the joint has to be placed on an area. And um, after this, when you have the muscles at the joint as the right place, after this, you can place your teeth, your restoration. Perfect. So if I heard you correctly, you do look at the structure from far, in other words, the posture, uh, then you look at muscles and the joint space. Yes, exactly. And if the patient has symptom, if the patient has symptom, um, I, I work with my chiropractor uh, directly. So if the patient has no symptom, okay, I do my treatment with that, without my chiropractor. And when I test my new occlusion, if I have problem with the patient with uh, some pain, uh, I send the patient to the chiropractor. But if the patient has symptom at the beginning, I send to the chiropractor and after I record the position of the jaw. Perfect. Right. Do you have something to add there, Javier, or should I go to no. question number three? Yeah, question number, he covered a little bit of uh, a few other questions, but it's okay. That's okay, fine. yeah, I know, we're, we're crossing over. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cyril, can you tell us uh, what diagnostic records do you take uh, prior to uh, starting your cases? Um, uh, I can do um, CBCT. Okay. Um, electromyography. And after I uh, use also uh, an amazing machine. Uh, I, I find this machine amazing, a mojo. Um, because with the mojo, I can work. I'm not familiar with that. Can you tell me what that is? What is the mojo? Ah. Um, the mojo is a machine. Uh, it's like a, um, imagine you have some uh, captor in your mouth, in your teeth, you have a captor, and in front of you, you have a camera. And when you move, and in fact, the camera records the movement of your jaw. Oh, and fantastic. Yeah, yes, it's fantastic. I, I will show you um, the first. It's something in a lecture. Yeah, it's something yes. like uh, I've been showing the videos that you can see the CVCT in real time. It's an amazing oh. company developed in France. They use different optics. So, like in SciCAD, we utilize. So it's an uh, optical jaw tracker. It's an optical jaw tracker that allows to see the movement in real time. Really, oh. really. I mean, this is the newest technology we have. So, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And, Beautiful. And when you record something, you, you can record the, the cycle of mastication. And with this record, you can send this record to your lab and your lab can create your splint or your mock-up with the cycle of mastication of the patient. Oh, beautiful. So nowadays, we can work not with... So that, that information can be superimposed on your CBCT. Completely. And then they can, yeah. and, and your CBCT can have also the, the scan of the teeth that they can, 
Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. Fantastic. Yeah, Excellent. full data, data integration. Really amazing. Excellent. Good. All right, so I, I think that kind of like uh, um, also answers our uh, which instrumentations do you use. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, and also question number five uh, is uh, whether you use interdisciplinary and you said that already that with your symptomatic patients, you work with a chiropractor. Yeah, and also you can add um, orthoptist, uh, sleep apnea doctor, uh, okay. speech, speech therapist, it's really important. What is more popular in France, chiropractors or physical therapists? Because every country changes, you know. Some people, I found this when I'm traveling, that it's a lot of chiropractors that they also do physical therapy and backwards. It's like a no big differentiation in many places. How it works in France? Uh, physiotherapist is something um, very old in France. And uh, it's, um, yes, the... the there are, um, uh, yes, and osteopaths appeared uh, maybe uh, 20 years ago, so not so long. In chiropractor, it's very rare. And I, I like to work with my chiropractor because it, it's, this guy is amazing. And uh, when I met him, and I talk with him. Uh, the first thing he, he told me it's you have to check C1 and C2 because it could be a problem with occlusion. Occlusion could be a problem for C1, C2, but C1, C2 could be a problem for occlusion. And it was he was the, the first guy who explained that to me. And so I started to work with him. And um, this, is, this is why I, I start with the chiropractor, but chiropractor is not something to develop it um, in, in France. Yeah, That's you guys it. in France have amazing brains. You have also in Marcel, I think, you have Dr. Pricot, the posturologist. Marcel, yeah. And I found now with the students in France is, I mean, it's beautiful because maybe they don't know much about how we do occlusion in the physiological way but they really know posture they have amazing foundation that i think we wish we have more influence in the states about posturology that mm -hmm. is more popular Seems uh, like, like they're the, getting to the same place yeah it's getting bigger as a fact we're gonna have also dr gustavo bernaza from argentina that also he's a prostorontics but he's been utilizing posturology so I think the way life is going is also all this holistic physiological approach that we will be part of the question that we will have to see at some all point. Right. So let's move on uh, because we're getting the last 10 minutes of our, uh, our time. Um, so, uh, you know, you have, you have said this a little bit, but I want you to kind of, Cyril, now put it in a uh, step one, two, three, four. Can you give us the sequence of treatment uh, for instance, for a pain patient that's going to become uh, possibly uh, a full mouth case for you later. Can you give us the sequence of uh, treatment for that patient? Yeah. Uh, so um, the sequence is um, first interview with the patient to, to explain um, the objective of the treatment, to be very clear with the patient. What can he expects and what can I do? Um, uh, then um, with the so symptomatic patient, he goes to a chiropractor, have manipulation with the chiropractors, back to the office. Uh, he's not so far, but he's not in the same office, back to the office the same day. If it's possible, just after. I play the tense and I record the new, the, the new bite. Right. I, I create the splint and I play the splint, start the equilibration with the tense and I ask the patient to back to the chiropractor. And in my process, I have between three and five equilibration. And each time I ask the patient to go to the chiropractor and just after come to the office and equilibrate the splint. 
when it's stable, when the chiropractor say, okay, now it's stable, we can do the final restoration. How long do you normally keep them in that, uh, in that orthosis for, uh, for, to make sure they're stable and... and, and... Um, for symptomatic patients, three months, sometimes six months, and some patients have um, one year. Okay, so it depends per case and when you feel like they have a stabilized. Okay, so fantastic. Um, question number seven. Now, you've seen this patient and uh, this is gonna turn into uh, a full mat as we spoke. When do you enter the facial aesthetic consideration into this? Was it at the first appointment <coughs> or now it's going to be a, 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 so, an a consideration now. If the patient is asymptomatic, uh, aesthetic first. Plan aesthetic, it's like, a, it's like a box. For me, the maxillary is like this. I plan aesthetic. After, it's easy, it's easy to place the joint inside. Yeah, but no, that's, that's the that's a aesthetic case and asymptomatic patient. We're talking yes. about this same patient that came to you and, and it was a symptomatic and you know we we're gonna stabilize them. Yes, so first I stabilize. So don't care about aesthetic, it's not the problem. The problem is stabilize. I see. Now when it's stabilized, I record the, the occlusion at this part mm -hmm. and I analyze the aesthetic and I see uh, if I can do aesthetic with this position. So if I can do aesthetic with this position only with prosthetics or if I need ortho or if I need surgery. So your aesthetic consideration comes after yes. you make the patient asymptomatic. Yes. It, it, it's, a, it's really a problem of communication. If I start to communicate about aesthetic and the patient has pain and asks to me to um, treat the pain, it don't care about aesthetic. Yeah, that's... Um, does that answer you, Javier? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, which well, question we it. are? Uh, We're gonna be going to uh, be on question number eight. And uh, okay. this is a little bit, um, uh, do you, I don't know, uh, Cyril, do you do any surgeries? Uh, implant, yeah. Okay, um, so I'm assuming that, uh, are you familiar with the uh, growth factors and biological factors for healing? Uh, yes. PRF, IPRF? Yeah, yeah yes. Um, I use um, BTI. BTI. BTI, good. Yes, I, I use, use that. Uh, yeah, I use BTI, but only for surgery. I never tried BTI for, um, for joint. Uh, I know Anuita do that because uh, I don't know if, if you know about Anuita. Yes, uh, I studied with him also. I, I, I got into it. That, that was my entry. Okay. And so I know he treats a lot of John with, uh, with product. There, is a, there is a big difference though. <clears throat> the, the, um, so the consensus that we have gotten that everybody agrees that this whether it's a PRGF, like BTI system, or if it's IPRF, that uh, this stuff is doing good. Uh, the main thing is that uh, when do you administer? Now, um, the consensus has been first stabilizing the bite and taking the, the compression out of the joint, which, and then introduce the, the factors for, for healing. Um, uh, what do you think is the proper proper sequence. I, I, I don't have any experience, so it's, it's difficult. Uh, if I have to think just uh, about the sequence, I think I will place the jaw and place the joint correctly. And after this, I place my factor. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Correct. I yeah, that's the... The, 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 the common thinking process, and then that's what we're gonna have uh, is an special guest that is Alejandro Martinez, maxillofacial surgeon, 
that he's going to tell us everything about the way that he's doing it, how the way that he stopped doing maxillofacial joint surgeries to focus in something more conservative and something like that. So we're really anxious to have that. So that's beautiful. But the, what we're trying to, to get into that question is, since we think that, you know, with a restorative adhesion of, um, and a restoration, we can change the wear and tear of that tooth, how we can use something to make that condal to reshape. So I think for physiological occlusion, this is a pretty nice approach. So I think everybody's excited to hear how this is the process or how they can involve it into the workflows. So I'm really, really, really excited to know about that. Fantastic. <clears throat> Let's go, we're, we're in the last two minutes. I think we have to go a little bit over. Um, uh, Cyril, uh, do you notice or do you take notice uh, of postural changes after your treatments? Uh, are they uh, expected, unexpected, uh, good, bad, uh, positive, negative? What, what do you see? Uh, everything, good and bad. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's good. a good, honest answer. Uh, I just tell you uh, a bad uh, because good everything has good and and just um just bad um it was uh, it was one of my patients with no symptom um a class 2 2 okay with a supraclusion and um with a old feeling and all crumbs and he want to remove everything and rehab uh, his mouth so need the full mouth rehabilitation with no problem with that. And so I said, okay, uh, we have to increase vertical dimension and uh, remove the crown, place overlay, ceramic, blah, 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 beautiful. And so I started with increases my vertical dimension and I increased like, I don't remember, but maybe six, seven millimeters. So I increase it. Yeah. And I place the mock-up and after two weeks the patient arrived um, for equilibration and he told me ah you know doctor i have some pain on my neck mm -hmm. and um, on my shoulder it's difficult to move my shoulder and i have some um, paresthesia in the finger and so because i know it could be occlusion. I say, yes, okay, we have to equilibrate maybe. So I equilibrate. And one week after for another equilibration, the patient, the patient arrived completely blocked like this. Oh, wow. wow. And I say, okay, it's, it's difficult. I say, yes, it's difficult. I cannot sleep anymore. And um, I go to the physiotherapist and make me a massage and uh, yes and i say okay you know what i want to remove everything and i want to place your old vertical dimension and so i explain okay maybe it's occlusion maybe it's too high and i explain everything okay yes okay if you want so i remove everything i place the old vertical dimension and in two days everything disappeared wow interesting so, in that time that you were working with your chiropractor in the no. interconsult? No, 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 because it was in my process was no symptom. So yes, it's a class two, two, okay, but it's no symptom. So I say, okay, I can increase and, but for this patient, it was a big mistake. And so maybe I could stay my occlusion like this, like with increasing the vertical dimension and said, and said it to, the, to my chiropractor. But also what I see um, with age, it's when you have a class 2-2, two -two, this patient was a class 2-2 two -two and he was uh, 65 years old with a class 2-2. Two -two. So his body is like a class 2-2. Two -two. So it's not a good idea to change a part of the body of the patient to uh, have a better normality, like a class two one. 
if his body is class 2 2 his condyle is class 2 2 and so what i what i want for my treatment is to integrate my treatment in the in the body of the patient so when the patient has no symptom again i try just to integrate my treatment and i try to change almost nothing because if you change something in a patient was we live with that with the class 2 2 for many years it could be a problem and it was an example so it's there a, is a lot process. of engramming in that body especially yeah. a 65 year old that um, unless you break it up before by a physical therapist that's really you know at least in our experience is you cannot jump that there is going to be subluxations there that are not going to just resolve because you put the jaw in the right place. Ah, exactly. Yeah, and as Rocabaro say, for every part of the body that has restrictions, it's just certain amount that you can recuperate. So I think those class two patients, for all of us, I think we know that they're more difficult patients because they definitely have the posture, the airway, everything thrown off, and then that think this was a great experience and thank you for being so honest and because that's where we learn for the experience that those cases is that definitely that they need an interdisciplinary treatment because this is like a domino effect many people doesn't know where to start but in a condition like, like that it's a clear compensation of the system that you when you were changing just that little piece everything started becoming sensitive and symptoms coming back but that, that, that's a really, really, really great uh, yeah. a, a story. Um, but uh, and he, he appreci she made to appreciate the value of interdisciplinary treatment. That's beautiful. Okay, awesome. All right, next let's, question. Uh, let's move on. Next question. We have two more. We have, uh, um, this is more of a uh, theoretical and, 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 and philosophical question. Do you think that uh, we will ever have uh, this kind of approach to teaching occlusion in, in our schools? Yes. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I think it, we, we have to teach occlusion uh, in a simple way. Um, um to to because occlusion when i was in university occlusion was something very complex with yeah. a pro programming the articulator and a lot of things and and i think we have to simplify function one thing and the other thing we have to think that the pain even if the pain are in the muscle space even the pain are um, in the jaw uh, is not necessary because of the teeth. Maybe it it could be uh, the, the problem um, could be uh, in the other part of the body. So we have to simplify the occlusion function, and we have to think we are not alone. We have just a part of the body, and we have to treat our patient with more, more as a whole unit yes awesome that's it. now uh the last question is more of a question we're put in there uh, for the sake of a standardization <clears throat> just thinking about the joint itself and the events that are happening in the joint uh what do you think we're talking about the rotation translation uh, events that are happening in your mind what do you think is happening in there is the uh, rotation then translation correct or is it the simultaneous effect or and and uh, when you're thinking about that i want you to think about something else in your ideal position when you're finishing your case where is that head of condyle um in that jaw joint hmm. uh I don't believe in rotation. I don't believe in translation. I believe um, I believe the, the the mandible and the jaw as like a plane. I I record a, a lot of jaw position 
and what and I'm uh, uh, this kind of case. My my mouse is uh, this kind of case. I, I record the jaw is at the jaw move like this. So this is incisors and it move yep. like this. and this movement. So I have the same contact on the anterior and I create place just on the posterior. And this movement is not rotation, is not translation. And sometimes when I look at the patient in frontal, you have this kind of inclination. So you, you create more place on the left than the right. So it's not rotation. So I don't believe in rotation and translation. I believe that the jaw is in the space and the muscle just um, keep the jaw at this place. And if you relax the muscles, you can move the jaw as you want. As you want in 0.2 millimeters or 0.5 millimeters. It's not five millimeters, but you can move the jaw as you want. It's not just rotation and translation. So it's like a swing, like a columpio, like a swing for kids. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's going to be bounced. Yeah. I Thank you. That. Fantastic. Get we are officially, officially done with the questions, Javier. Yeah, we pick his brain. Honestly, thank you so much, Cyril, for uh, breaking this bridge of connection between philosophies, what is positive, what is possible. I like pretty much the way that you think without dogmas in any way, in any favoritism at all. Yeah. Um, but I think this is what it shows the reality of how occlusion needs to be treated. I think it's important to have information because uh, if you have the information, you can control the way that you work. But I consider that it's too many people that they don't even have information and that's why they don't even want to learn more. It's not because they decide that based on the information, they want to narrow it down as you do amazingly. But the reason that we have this program together is to show the entire people how we are working different with different techniques, different modalities, getting different information, but also with the understanding of what is human physiology, that that is the main point. If we, after this meeting, we get the people to understand that occlusion is a combination of multiple events, that is not just that quick question that was before, like, did together, I think we will win a huge battle. Uh, we want to apologize for some of the people, the connection went down, so we have part of the, the, the lecture in two parts. Um, but also remember, all the videos will be edited and put it back in uh, my channel, Dr. Javier Vasquez in YouTube, also as Hamid at Complete Health Group. And you're gonna, guys, gonna have access to come back, review this, share with people, this is only to help to spread the concept of open mind thinking. Right? So much invaluable information in here. I hope uh, people really take advantage of it and, 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 and see the, the work from uh, um, somebody that really has a, a lot of good critical thinking, questioning, and uh, moving the, the goalposts based on the cases they see. There is no one cookbook uh, uh, you know, step for uh, for uh, all these cases. We need to learn to be di good diagnosticians, and that's what I heard, and that's what I learned from you, Cyril. Uh, that uh, I love the way how you're you're changing your your things like your dance steps depending on each case, and uh, that's that's what a great physician does. You know, you you have learned a lot of different uh, techniques, and and you apply them as you see fit for those patients. Thank you. So we, we have a few questions before we finish. Uh, they were in the other live, not in this one. So let me try to reach them. Let me try to go back to the previous live. So since we already passed, doesn't matter just to answer this question. 
Oh my God, what is my other life? Uh, I'm checking in my phone right now. Hold on a second. Uh, this is not this one. This is the one that I'm looking here. Okay, here we go. Here are the questions, more comments. Okay, Dr. Bon, okay, we'll say. Um, so Matthew Dudon, I don't even know how to pronounce the names. He say, hello, function, design, body, and face. Function, I think he's telling us the, like the order. He say, function, design, body, and face. Teeth and gum design, only the smile. Okay, thank you for the opinion. This, we were looking more for questions. Um, somebody's asking about the book of Marcel Legal. Um, just as a quick reference, I put it in my website because I know people is asking for it. Uh, my website just direct to the page of Professor Legal where the book is and it's translated in English for the ones that speak English. So you go to my page www.javiervasquez.com into the segment that say biofunctional dynamics is something that is say important information to, to read. I have a few articles that I've been trying to glean for ICMO for the International College. I put this one for Legal. Another articles in sense of human uh, integration that I have in there. So I have an entire article, a title that is called Canaan Guides, uh, Myth or Reality. If you click in there, you're gonna go directly to Dr. Legal page. So for those that are asking where we can find the article or the book is there. Then we have... Um, and, and, um, and please, uh, uh, still, you can still write your questions. We will have a system to collect these and uh, try to get answers for you all. So Emilio comment with us and he say, Marcel and Jean Francois Lauret. Um, and that's good because I know you guys have amazing brains over there. So I love you. I love this thinking. Question here, say process and check up of the follow-up of your patients in the future? That, uh, Cyril, that's a question, but I think pretty much, I think you explained that, but just let's have the courtesy to tell the people. Uh, so the question again is like, I think they asking, what is the process and checkup of the follow-up for your patients for the future? Uh, the the follow-up of the patient I treated. Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, for, for the patient with symptom at the beginning, uh, I see the patient every six months, um, and I check um, mastic occlusion mastication. Uh, I check the muscles. Um, I I talk a lot with the um, patient about. Um, their feeling, their feeling, and um, probably with the future with digital, um, I will make impression, digital impression every every year probably, probably, and maybe I will record with the Mojo uh, every year, just to have files and. Maybe one day we we could superpose every file, uh, every impression, every movement to see if something change or not. Because what what I think because we we saw that um, with implant, when when we do a full mouth rehabilitation on implant um, with uh, on on an old edentellus patient, at the beginning the patient don't want to chew on the prosthetics because they pay a lot. So they don't want to damage or destroy the prosthetics. And also because the muscles are, um, are not so strong because before they, they, they didn't have any teeth or uh, removable teeth. So the, the muscles are very, very um, not strong. And so they start to chew and it's like sports. At the beginning, you are not so strong, 
But with training, with training, with training, you become stronger. And so the cycle of mastication change. And at the beginning, that should exist. And with time, that start to choose like this. And your equilibration has to change. So this is for implant, and we know that on implant. But for the patient with symptom, I think it's the same. At the beginning, because of the pain, that shoe very gentle, because they no pain and they no exception, correct? Yes. But with time, if the pain disappeared, if they become more confident with the prosthetics and with the pain, they will shoe harder right. uh, with a large cycle of mastication, and we could have a problem later correct so we have to we have to check with time the cycle of mastication it's a very good uh, that's a very good point uh, with implants uh, we also know there is a couple of different things you know, of course we all know we have the osteo integration but the uh, osteoperception doesn't start until about a year year and a half after mm -hmm. they have and that's that's another thing that changes the the cycle that's true that's awesome. Thank you so, much. so thank you so much, Cyril, one more time uh, mm -hmm. for this uh, amazing time talking with you with, uh, together. Definitely next time that I'm going to go to France, we need to meet in person again and yeah. grab some wine and some beers. And maybe, maybe I will make you smoke a cigar. Yeah, and yeah. we will have some yeah. fun. All right, guys. Okay. So we get into it. Thank you so much, Cyril. Very good thank to you. meet you. Thank you for the interview and thank you for everything. It was a great time. Thank you so much. So then we get been ready for the 6 p.m. Uh, interview. So we're going to have uh, Dr. Mariana Evans. Uh, she's originally from Croatia, but she lives here in the States. She's a uh, orthodontics and periodontics. And she's going to talk about something that I found really fascinating. I have the opportunity to be lecturing with her at the Academy of Equilibration Society. And when I get to the room, she already started. And the only thing that I seen on CCVCT is like 10 millimeters of space in the entire rafe. And I say, what the hell is this? And then I see it and I start seeing how amazing is this approach that I think apply for all these patients with a sleep apnea, with collapse arches. So she's going to tell us a little bit about rapid expansion in adults. Um, using mini implants, we don't use in, or we not abusing the periodontal ligament. That is one of the rejections that many people has.